Hello everyone, I'm here to tell you about this great dirt cheap motherboard. It's an AMD AM4 motherboard for Ryzen CPUs. It's the uh, ASRock AB350M Pro 4. It's a micro ATX. It has uh, three PCI inputs, but um, you can really only fit one uh, GPU in there. So keep that in mind. But uh, it's $79.99 on Newegg when I bought it. It also has a $5 rebate, if you care. And um, the reason I'm doing this video is there is no information on this, or no videos, about how it does with RAM speeds and its capability of overclocking the CPU. So this is what we're going to take a look at in this video. First things first, let's take a look at all the parts that were used in this system. And uh, of course, the most important things are going to be the motherboard, the CPU, and the RAM combo. Um, the RAM brand is also very important because some motherboards, CPUs, don't like certain brands of RAM. You cannot get over a certain speed, so keep that in mind. Okay, so... We got the uh, motherboard, as you can see. Apparently, I got it at Newegg for $79.99. And it did have a $5 rebate on it. And uh, like I said, it's a micro ATX. And for the CPU, I'm using the AMD Ryzen 5 1600. Comes with its own stock cooler, so you don't have to worry about getting another one. And this is the important thing here. Uh, the uh, memory is the Corsair Vengeance LPX. 3200 uh, 2 times 8 gigabyte for 16 gigabytes total here's the case the s340 i put in a uh, 120 gig of ssd in here and this is also a great little one terabyte uh, hard drive there's the gpu you know just your flavor whatever you feel like this is a great deal 40 bucks for the 600 watt 80 plus rated now the NZXT, the S340, doesn't come with front fans, so I bought two of those fans and also the uh, fan splitter cable there. And uh, I like my Arctic thermal compound, so let's get into it. Here we're in Windows and we're checking out the temperatures. Now one thing to keep in mind with the stock cooler is you can't really put too much volts on the CPU, otherwise the temperatures just go crazy. Uh, during idle operation, when the CPU is on idle, I get about 30 to 38 Celsius. Uh, goes back and forth. And here's the CPU ID. We can see that it's at 3.9 gigahertz, the CPU is. The multiplier is at 39. And um, we're going to go ahead and benchmark the CPU with the CPU Z uh, just to show you the temperatures. Uh, yeah, so, and the RAM, as you can see, is, uh, 1600 times 2, 3200. And let's go ahead and bench this CPU and just watch the temperatures, how it jumps from about 30s immediately to 60s to 70s. And um, and remember, we're at 3.9 gigahertz at 1.35 volts on the CPU. So it's not too bad. But when we go up to 1.39 volts on the core, then uh, the temperatures really go crazy towards 90s with this stock cooler. And... Um, Let's go into the BIOS, and I want to show you how great this motherboard is. I mean, as you can see from the gate, the DDR4 is at 2100. But with a click of a button, just switch it to XMP2 profile, and it'll put it to 3200 megahertz. You don't have to do anything else. Just exit, save, and let's go ahead and boot into the... Uh, UEFI again, and there you go. DDR4-3200. All it took was one click of a button. And this uh, motherboard is 
eighty dollars. At the time, I couldn't find a cheaper motherboard. Um, so that easy to achieve thirty two hundred with this Corsair Vengeance. Um, it just worked out fine. And uh, let's go now to overclock the uh, CPU. And we go to the advanced tab and go down to the P core states. Now there, as you can see, we're at 3900 megahertz at 1.35 volts. Um, now I don't want to get in too deep on this. You can actually go watch Tech City Channel, Brian there. He recently did a really good tutorial on this part of how to um, overclock your CPU, your Ryzen's, with the ASRock motherboards. And he just goes in pretty deep in there. So I'm not going to go into it. I just want to show you really quick. I was able to overclock this to 3.96 gigahertz. But, of course, the volts had to go up to one point three nine three seven five and with the stock cooler while i was stressing stressing the cpu the temperatures went up to 90 and so i just dialed it back to 1.35 volts and i am able to get a, a solid 3.9 gigahertz at 1.35 volts and that's where i'm keeping it right now i'm happy with it you know 3.9 gigahertz at 1.3 Three five volts. I think it's great, but if you have an after uh, market solution, water or ale, air cooler, you can definitely get this up to. Um, I'm pretty sure you can get up to four gigahertz, even with this eighty dollar motherboard here. Um, of course, your mileage may vary with the CPU you have on hand, but um, there it is. I'm really happy with it. Now, another thing I did is the fan. I adjusted the CPU fan to full speed at all times. I just want to, you know, make sure that I'm keeping the temperatures under control. Also, you can go ahead and change your case fan settings. I put it on performance mode and what it's looking at, the, the chassis fan is looking at the temperature of the CPU, not the motherboard. So it's looking at the CPU, and when the CPU gets hot, as the CPU gets hotter, the case fans also ramp up. And that's that. Let's exit and go back to Windows to do some more benchmarking. And uh, let's go ahead and run Cinebench for the CPU. Let's benchmark the CPU. And uh, I was able to get, I believe, 13... 16 when I had the uh, CPU clocked at 3.4 and I mean 3.94 I'm sorry and right now like I said we're benchmarking it at 3.9 gigahertz at 1.35 volts and we're getting 1287 which isn't bad there you go it's uh I'm really happy with this motherboard as you can tell for $80, that was the cheapest I could find. Now, if you don't care about micro ATX, then of course there are other options out there. But uh, so Ryzen 1600, Corsair Vengeance, LPX 3200, and ASRock AB350M Pro 4 micro ATX is a great combo. If you're on a budget, I think you can go with these and you can, of course, save more money by going with lower speed RAM. But I really wanted to see if this uh, board was able to get it up to 3200. And, um, oh, I forgot to mention, of course, the first time I um, ran the UEFI, I immediately updated the uh, BIOS revision. Uh, right now it's at 2.4 from ASRock. And... Uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it'll help someone out there. You guys have a good one.